Good morning. Good morning. Let's go ahead and start this morning off worshiping the Lord. Yeah. 
excited and really puzzled because we have some visitors today. Earl and Kim Mills are here today. And, and so you might have made well, maybe. Um, but it's not. They actually didn't know Randy wasn't here today either. So, um, what, but who is speaking? We have Ben Neff with us and his wife Michelle and their family is here. Ben is on staff at Mount Tabor um, Church of God. So we're excited to have him here. By the way, he does have um, some notes for you. Um, on the, it's on the back of the prayer request list, so you can find that there. And so, welcome to Ben. Okay. Well, thanks. Uh, yeah, so I've been here several times over the years, so many of you recognize me. Um, I don't look much different, uh, other than my hair is shorter every time I come. And so I was pretty relaxed uh, to come preach, felt like a second home a little bit. Um, it was a place I preached at, second to Mount Tabor. Uh, as many times. But then the, the boss is here, you know, with the principals here to see, you know, check in, you know, give the evaluation and so forth. So I, I'm i going to be on my best behavior. I did that really well for 18 years of teaching, um, where I would, you know, wait, give my best performance when the principal would come in and so forth. Uh, uh, I now, though I'm not teaching anymore, I'm full-time at Mount Tabor, and I'm an associate pastor. People ask me my title, a youth pastor, young families pastor, I do a men's ministry, I help Christian ed, so jack of all trades, master of none, and that's kind of me. Okay, so today um, I get to bring the word, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, one side I've been thinking about all week, by the way, is uh, um, any deer hunters here, I just a public announcement, any deer hunters? Please fill your doe tags, okay? My wife this week, uh, she she took up hunting with our Toyota. <laughs> yeah, uh, so the deer lost, but uh, $5,500 later. Uh, yes, Liza, for my own youth group too, yeah, she'll come. Unfortunately, she survived. Like and, and fortunately. You said unfortunately. I, I apparently, I'm really going to be held accountable today. <laughs> I said to the youth, and fortunately she survived. <laughs> and they swear I said unfortunately. <laughs> and luckily she's not here. Myself. All right, so... Okay, so where were we? Uh, we are going to open the Word of God and read it right now, okay? And thank it for what, it's, what it says, instead of uh, our own interpretation, I guess. So, tested by fire, I can't see it, it's up there, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, that is titled this one. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, so I hope you will read it with me here a little bit. I'm going to go uh, give some background context, and then I want to get to specifically focus on towards the end of where our passage is. Um, so, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, you uh, might be familiar with this passage, in Corinth, uh, the Corinthian church here. Uh, there's the first two chapters in, Corinth, uh, in Corinthians are um, a lot of division in the church. All right? there's, uh, even back then, there was a lot of division in the church about whose teaching people would follow. Uh, I follow, you know, like here we talk about, you know, whether it's John Wesley or Martin Luther or whatever, Pope or whoever it is, right back then, they were talking about other teachers, Paul, Apollo, Cephas. So it's nothing different than we don't know today. It's been going on for 2,000 years. And so there was a lot of that going on there. Now, the town of Corinth was a sports-crazy town. Um, again, something we could relate to. They had the Isthmus Games that went on during that time as a, kind of a precursor, really, uh, to the... Uh, Olympics in, the, in there, and they had the Temple of Aphrodite there as well, so it was known for its uh, idol worship. And they had approximately a half a million people that would float through their town. Think of how 118 gets so much traffic through here, and it's kind of the same same idea, only tenfold, uh, where they had 500,000 sailors and others come through that town for a year. There was rampant sexual sin throughout the whole entire uh, area. That's why Paul talks so much about it during that time. And prostitution in the actual temple of Aphrodite, things like that. Um, so there's a lot going on in that church there. 
uh, that Paul had some words that he had to so delicately and firmly say, so much so like we have to do today. And so we pick up in chapter 3 here, and it says in verses 1 through 3 here, I'm going to start with, Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ. Uh, I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere men? So this is, again, what we see today going on. I follow whichever teacher it is. Um, John Piper, John MacArthur, whatever teacher it is, Andy Stanley, or whoever preacher you have of your choice, you're going to see people saying, this is who we follow. But he's saying that there was jealousy and quarreling going on amongst them. Now, have you ever seen a 45-year-old baby? <laughs> I don't know. Last year I did. When the Bengals lost the Super Bowl. <laughs> All right. I saw a lot of grown men act like babies. All right. Anytime the Buckeyes lose, I see a lot of grown men acting like babies. <laughs> Immature, crying about, that call wasn't, if it wasn't that call, or this person, the coach didn't do this, wah, 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 <laughs> right? And so those people do attend church. In fact, last year they were in their Bengals jerseys at church, you know, it's Super Bowl Sunday. Attendance was great the Sunday before uh, the Bengals played, and the next week following that, the attendance was way down as if the Lord didn't answer their prayers or something like that. But you see, infancy in the church, immature thinking. Uh, what are signs of it again? If there's bickering and fighting, jealousy, then that is a sign of a baby, a Christian baby. Even though they're old, they might have been in the faith a long time, we see people that do not act their age, their spiritual age. So if you've been a Christian a long time, we would expect you to no longer hold on to anger, resentment, bitterness, unforgiveness, jealousy, all those things we would expect to leave. And I think that's what Paul was looking at, like, what's going on here? Why are you fighting? All right, if you are, if you've been maturing in the faith, then these things should not go on. So he's trying to set things up here to get them to grow up. Now, I think in the church today, we see a lot of infantile uh, things. I, I'm very concerned um, that people just don't know Scripture uh, that if, even if, if their church teaches the scriptures, they're just not in them. And so they remain in a very infantile state. Um, I know, I, the church camp, I ran church camp for years, as many of you know, uh, I didn't run it, I guess I was the dean of one, the senior high week, but their testimony sometimes went like this. I had a problem, God helped me through it. <laughs> you know, or something like very much just not surface and not be on the surface level. Nothing deep about it. It's just like that. And sometimes we can get very cliche with our phrases in the Christian world too. If God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. And I would say, yes, I don't deny that true. But I feel like that is just, there's so much more than just we give a cliche passing phrase of like, yeah, God brings you to it. He'll bring you through it. Uh, and stuff like that. And that can actually be a sign of being Infantile. Another one I'll give you that's kind of an interesting one, I think, is Christian music. Uh, Christian music, a lot of times, can give the appearance of godliness, but yet we don't go in depth. Uh, Skillet has one of my favorite songs of all time, Man, I Feel Like a Monster. All right. John Cooper himself, who wrote the song, is like, don't be singing that in church, folks. <laughs> He's like, I don't write worship songs. Get into God's Word. This is the, the guy who's playing the music saying, no, you need to be in God's Word, reading God's Word, and interacting with God's Word. And so, so many people, we listen to artists who, uh, then that the, give these spiritual sounding lyrics, and we find out later they renounce the faith. That's happened over the past few years. And I'll tell you what, they wrote catchy lyrics, but they never really got into knowing what the scriptures say. And so they, we have to make sure a right view of God leads to a right relationship. A wrong view of God leads to a wrong relationship. And obviously we need to be in his word and knowing that. Um, just the fact that we know Jesus died on the cross is the springboard into an ocean of learning. Right? 
So knowing that Jesus died on the cross brings us into all of this expanse. Knowing that every verse in the Bible, if you start tracing it back, is always going to point you to the person of Jesus Christ. And, and so knowing that is going to transform you from uh, infant, infantile behavior to mature behavior. So coming every week but still being caught up in the things of the world will not cause you to grow. It will leave you stagnant. All right? That's why I say, seek first the kingdom and all his righteousness. I love that last song you guys did. It's so beautiful, too, by the way. Gave Judy, wow, that was beautiful. And, and I love that song. It's just such a prayer that if we actually come Sunday, pray that, and then we pray that every day, we will see the Lord answer that. Um, let's look then, as we go on here, I'm going to read off of this one so the versions match what you see here. Um, in verse 4 then, For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? What, after all, is Apollos, and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe as, as the Lord has assigned each of his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. So now we look at the fact that uh, Paul transitions into a farming analogy, right? And we can relate. Huh? So he's speaking to them. And giving them one way to look at that, and looking at this farming analogy that you see, where he says, I'm the one who planted the seed, Paul's watering, and God's making it grow. But he's saying, we're all in this together uh, to the glory of God. Paul began the beginning work, and then Apollos does the follow-up work. Many times we have in the church, we have people that plant church, we have people that pioneer and lead and start church with the missionaries, and then we have people that God has called to go in and be and behind them, and to build on what they've done, to work and nurture that area and that soul of and disciple, right? So whether you focus on evangelism or discipleship, yes, right? <laughs> you focus on evangelism and discipleship, and certain people are wired to do that, to just say, well, I like them better than I like them. They each serve a purpose. In a way, when you're doing a... Uh, uh, a, bowl, you, uh, a new bill, you need somebody to get in there with that plow and clear that ground, right? And you need somebody that's got some weight. You got something that's got some weight behind it. You need something that's going to get in there. You might rub people wrong way a little bit when you're doing that. But you need that type of personality. That was what Paul was, okay? He was that type of, uh, of bull that just kind of charged in there and made the changes necessary to bring that kingdom there. And then you need those people that nurture and go on behind and water and care for it in probably a little bit more loving way than Paul was at times. Paul could be pretty blunt, right? And some of the words that Paul said, uh, we, we won't give exact um, explanation what he was referring to, but it's pretty straightforward as to what he was saying. And it was somewhat harsh. It wouldn't make people feel very good. So we are, but sometimes, and I've, I've seen this done, um, you know, some, it's a foe, like, look what God did, but they're really saying, look what I did. <laughs> All right? I'm going to tell you, look at what God did through my ministry. But it's more like, my ministry did this, God was kind of long for the ride. And, then, <laughs> and we can be, we can mask it however we want, but sometimes we can get prideful and, and then others say, yeah, that's who, and we get tied to one preacher, tied to one pastor, when we should be tied to the Word of God, and, and tied to, to Jesus Christ and what He says. And so, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And that's what I felt called to do the full-time ministry. I felt called for, to do that more regularly, because we have so few people willing to to plant the seed and water the seed. But we certainly shouldn't be fighting over uh, and have divisions amongst that. All right. uh, then after he uses the seed reference, then he moves into a building reference. And just, you know, hey, you're not getting it this way, I'm going to explain it another way. A sign of a good teacher uh, is to talk about building on a foundation. And that kind of gets to the, the meat of where I was uh, on my heart today, what I'd like to share with you. 
So here in verse 10, it says, By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each of you, each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. So it's so important. We're not building on Paul, okay? <laughs> and be clear, all right? Or Peter, by the way. <laughs> We're not, Paul or Peter, they, they are... Laying the foundation. They are not the foundation. The rock is Jesus Christ. And that is who uh, that is who and what is we build everything on. All right? And the gates of hell cannot stand it. All right? We build on that foundation. And as a wise builder, Paul carefully laid that foundation by how? By sharing the truth of God's word to the people and proclaiming it to them. He laid the foundation, and now that he laid that solid foundation of truth, all right, then they could build on it. By the way, that's a good choice, but we got to be real, really careful about watering down that foundation. Um, even, even with younger kids, I really hesitate to say, ask Jesus into your heart. Because do they understand what we're talking about? Do they understand the you know, sin and brokenness and a need for a Savior? All right? And we need to make sure to understand that we have a gap. All right, between him and God, a chasm because of our actions, because of our sin, all right, and we receive that forgiveness. But what we do a disservice if we just water it down to ask Jesus into our heart. Right. So Paul, again, Paul Apollos comes in. He's uh, building on that as well. He laid it, and um, then we get into an analogy here that um, I think is really powerful. So we're jumping to verse 12 now. We're not really jumping, we're going to it. But if anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss lost but yet will be saved even though only as one escaping through the flames so um i i think of that passage you know i did an analogy I, I one of the things that led me in the ministry i committed to something i shouldn't know <laughs> and then god blessed it um my uh, give it a little my story my dad had passed away in march of 2021 <laughs> and i realized the brevity of life and that every day we are not guaranteed and to make the most of it. And so my friend, a good friend of mine, said, hey, do you want to start a podcast? And, and me being, if you know me, I have like way too many commitments already in my life. But, and I should not be saying yes to commitments without thinking about things very carefully. And usually I don't. But he texted me, hey, do you want to do a podcast? And I went, thought about it for all of about half a second. Yes. <laughs> I do. Okay. And, and, um, and that led to a um, buyer's remorse. Then what did I just do? I don't have time to start a podcast. Oh my gosh. I know this is something that will have eternal value, but I just don't have the uh, time uh, to do this. A week later, there was a, I get a text or no a call from one of the elders and says, hey, um, the current youth pastor's uh, resigning. No one knows this. Do you want to put in for it? And I went, that's the heavens open and named it. Oh, I knew you. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, I, I'm going to be able to do this now. And early on in there, uh, actually, the first one I recorded, I told a story about the three little pigs. Right? And thinking about straw, sticks, and bricks. And we obviously know the story where you build with the straw and the big bad wolf comes and, you know, uh, what's that? Big Bad Wolf does what? Burn the shows and right, burn the chicks and can now burn brick because brick is good. So you couldn't get the bricks then? Correct. Yeah, so the bricks he couldn't. So he built some, so there are three different ways I, I, that they built. And obviously we understand that you built something of value. You don't go with the cheapest thing because it ain't going to last when the Big Bad Wolf comes. Whatever the world throws at us, it's the Big Bad Wolf. It ain't going to last. Well, Paul happens to line up with that, and he talks about that. And, and um, 
And and so this was what um, I did for the, the podcast. By the way, if you're wondering, it's called Manhood Restored. Shameless plug uh, for it. Um, and, and so I talked about the things that um, have value and don't. And so many times in our lives we have things that are straw-like. They just... They, they're nothing. They're no importance for eternity. And, and if I, in the church camp, I did this one year. I actually brought straw, straw sticks and bricks, and I threw it in there. And I threw the straw. Watch. Right? In an instant. Right? It's gone. It doesn't hardly do anything. You kind of got to dodge, dodge the uh, chaff that comes out burning at you. And then you throw the sticks in. And you see that it provides some, some warmth for a little while, but then it's gone. And then the bricks have something of value as well. Uh, and they're, they're, they have something that's going to last, something that's going to hold. You know, in a sense, the insurance companies, charge, from what I understand, charge less to insure a brick home than they do a stick home. Because <laughs> right? they know it's, got, it's built better. Now, uh, the, Paul takes it one step further, and he says, silver, gold, valuable, precious, things that are precious and long-lasting, even thousands of years later, right? He's talking about things that we turn about value, not just raw sticks and bricks, but things, precious metals there. I know somebody looked at a coin collection, somebody looked at it recently, and they, were, they weren't interested in anything but the silver coins. They're like, none of this other stuff is worth anything. It's just like cheap copper or something. They're like, but silver, yes, that's worth something. And I was reflecting on the fact that our lives, we have commitments that are like that, right? <clears throat> Things that aren't important, and then obviously more important, and then really important, and then even great value that you lock away. You can say, this is valuable. This is of importance. And, and less is more, we say, right, in our society of overindulgence, right? Less is more. How much of our homes is just stuff that's like, oh, I don't even need it. <laughs> We're going through the process of moving here, and I'm going to be looking at these items like, why do I hold on to it? I don't know. And then somebody you find a good reason to hold on to it, because you might need it if there was another blizzard of 78 or something like that. And so <laughs> you're holding on to that type thing. Um, but uh, I think about this when, um, you know, there's, you ever see a fire and you know some things are going to hurry. And the same thing we have, this is what the Bible talks about. The one day we are going to do this, uh, we're going to stand before the Lord here. And there will be the day, all right, will bring it to life. Uh, I believe it's referring to the day of judgment there in the sense of the, the, our works. One day we'll be held accountable for our works. Now, I picture it like the egg toss in a high school. I don't know if you're familiar. Ever do anything like an egg toss project in high school or something along the way? You know what I'm talking about with the egg toss? Anyone? Uh, they, they give you like... A few items. When I was in school, they gave us like two sheets of paper, a couple rubber bands, like a paper clip, you know, and you know, a piece of duct tape. <laughs> They're like, "Go ahead, we're going to drop this off a 15 foot platform. Make sure your egg doesn't break." <laughs> and so the, they tell us well in advance that day of reckoning's coming. Better be working on your project, of course. You know, some people are working on it every day and trial and error and doing those things. And others aren't really doing anything. <laughs> and then the day comes and they just kind of throw something together. But there's this idea, though, that then we, I remember when we did this, we were all, there's you know, 15 foot platform that we went up to and, and we walked up there. And each person, one by one, would walk up there with their project and they would hold that up there and then they would let it go. And then you'd hear the smack. <laughs> <laughs> And a lot of times you would see the egg flop right out. You would go and see, did what you build have the value? Did it protect? Did it do what it needed to do? And that's what I believe is going to happen is one day we will watch. We will see us gather around. And we will, it's as if we will carry our works up and say, here's the life, Lord, right? You gave me ten talents. Here's your ten talents. You know, or whatever you know, Back, I, I made you ten talents. Or what we're gonna be holding here, here, here's it, is God. And, and we lay it before the fire, and it'll be tested with fire, and we'll see what lasts. Okay. Um, it says, then it'll test the quality of each person's work, verse 14, if what 
has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward if it survives. So he's saying that there might be people that put stuff up, all right, and they won't have anything that they did with their 70, 80, 90 years of life of eternal value. Nothing. It says, if it is burned up, I, this is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. This gives me so much comfort. I kid you not. I'm not even being sarcastic here. Um, and by the way, I just released an episode on sarcasm on my podcast. <laughs> Man, they restored. Okay, shameless plug. All right. Okay. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. Boy, that gives me so much comfort. You can have fire insurance. It's saying it means you can accept Jesus. Ask him in your heart, surrender your life to him, and do nothing for the kingdom of God. He's still going to let you in. <laughs> that, to me, gives me great comfort. Because you know why? I know a lot of people like that. That they do nothing for Jesus Christ. They're doing it for Ben Napper. They're doing it for their name. So when the day of reckoning comes, and they lay it, it says, I, I, I can just picture this now, they lay it out there, and it's just like cardboard. If you ever light cardboard on fire, you know what I mean. You just whoosh. I know my kids, when they're younger, they're like, wow, what a fire. It's so hot. It's, it's like, no, it's not. All right? Because just for a few seconds, it flames up. And you got a, like, high tail here. I'm picturing us having a head of realize, oh, wow, it's all burning up. And then it's like you're fanning your tail to make sure it doesn't catch on fire. Right? You want to escape it through the flames. All right, your fancy's on fire uh, and says they will be saved. I don't want to be that person, do you? I don't want to be a person who decided that I would take that gift, hold it on like the one who buried their talent in the dirt and they didn't do anything with it. I don't want to be that person. And so I think about that and I think about what it is we can do for that. You may not change your career or whatever you're doing today, but you may be wondering, then what keeps? It's the paper that I gave you, okay? So if you look at the paper in your bolt, and those who grabbed it, all right? And you can grab it on the way out of the shirt. You may be wondering what keeps. I'm gonna give you some things that right where you're at, okay? You will be able to you will be able to uh, know that you can do these. Doesn't matter, young or old, all right, fat or thin, tall or small, whatever it is, you can do where you are at. That's the beauty of it. And you can build eternal value. One, all right, fill in the blank for you. That's why I can keep you interactive so you weren't sleeping on me, okay? So work diligently. Of course, I, I could have just given it to you, but then this portion at least <coughs> interact with a little bit. Work diligently at what, what you're doing. Okay, work all, with all your heart. Secondly, we can have meaningful conversations. How are you doing? How are you really doing? saw in the prayer request, you know, you had somebody pass away, you had this, how, how's that going? Can I pray for you? Oh, how well. Well, Buckeyes had a good game yesterday, didn't they? I wish they did. <laughs> <laughs> I went to bed after like the third, so I don't even know. I don't think they had Wisconsin came back and won. So. <laughs> okay. But, Meaningful conversations. Right. Avoid gossip. Ooh, man. Woo. This doesn't pertain to you at all, but I'm going to tell it to you. Okay. Avoid gossip. I, I take this one to heart so much so the house we're moving to, I got asked about it, and I didn't know if I was allowed to tell my wife. So then the, the people said, the woman said, hey, I'm sure Ben told you that we're, we're moving, right? And my wife said, no. I take the heart that I'm not the guy who's going to pass on. Like, if you tell me something, it's going to stay between us, unless you green light me to go tell somebody else. That's important. That is important. That means you're trustworthy. 
Most of you have what? Tell the truth. Not blunt truth, like I'm just saying, you know it, right? But just be truthful in what it is. Alright? Did you really say that? Well, yeah, I did. Okay. You know? <laughs> be honest. Okay? Along those lines, keep your word. Let your yes be yes, your no be no. Right, can you do this? Yes. Oh, man, I stand up for <laughs> So I know we're podcast. Okay. Okay. Right. Extend forgiveness. As Christians, we have to be people of forgiveness. We have to. That enough, to me, nothing shows the love of Jesus Christ more than when we show forgiveness to people that don't deserve People that have hurt us, people that have, you know, maybe torn your life apart, done something really harsh, and we extend forgiveness. Because that's what was given to us. If we don't extend it, then who's going to want that cost? Encourage others. I just got a text from a pastor friend um, that he calls me, I swear, I don't know, the perfect time, it seems like the Lord judges him. Even yesterday, he just sent me a text. Hey, love you, brother, praying for you. It was just, just left, left in my day, just that little bit. You know, same thing you can do with a card, right? Notes and drop it in the mail, boom, there it is. Casseroles. <laughs> you encourage people through food, right? <laughs> Okay. Obviously, this goes without saying, but pray continually. Again, someone else just recently just came and started praying over me. They, they didn't make it fancy or weird. They just kind of started praying. Like, pray, Lord, bless and give me strength. And, you know, give, just pray the Bible per se over me. And, and of course, the last, share the gospel. Share the good news with others. Now, um, I uh, felt like, as I was praying this morning, I was like, I had an interesting um, Friday for me. My Friday, now, I mentioned my dad passed away in 2021. My mom also passed away in 2021, um, both unexpectedly. And uh, uh, my mom, I'll tell you what, um, comparing, if we're comparing, she just would put about everyone well, everyone in this room to shave with the life she lived, she did something else. Like, and then you know her, you just you have no idea how selfless this woman was. Well, one of the things that she did, interesting enough, talking about straw, sticks, and bricks, is she was a social worker in Lima. She dealt with murder victims, homicide victims, all, all sorts of crime, violent crime. And so, so her job was when somebody was a victim of a violent crime, she was to come alongside them and help them know what the legal process was, what the rights were, and really help counsel them through that painful experience. Um, second to none, I, I really, I mean, I, I buy it, stuff, no doubt, but I mean, time and again, people will tell me she just wanted to right? She, and no one knew what kind of woman she was until she passed away, really. Like, you, you kind of knew, but it was only until after that that we heard the stories of that. And on Friday, she was instrumental in getting a homicide memorial garden put in place. It means that every single loved one, I mean, just like Jesus knows the no sparrow, he knows when the sparrows fall. She didn't want any loved ones that were murdered to be forgotten in Lima. So she started a memorial garden, which was really like a brick garden that every murder victim was then their name was on the brick, and placed and dedicated so those family members could experience some sort of healing and make sure that child that life was remembered. And so she did that religiously. Even after she retired, she was in pr praying that that would stay and be maintained. Well, um, she would have never wanted this in her life, but she was then recognized. They, they renamed the Memorial Garden, the Phyllis Neff Memorial Garden, Homicide Memorial Garden, on her behalf. Yeah, I can hold it together. Yeah, I promise. You know. and, and just when, when I've seen the stories of the life that she lived through, Time and again, these people that she would help, and no one knew she was doing it because she didn't want to get attention. The cards, the calls, the let's go grab a coffee. It's every day, Lord, what can I do to serve somebody else? I tell you what, she's got more rewards than all that, all of Washington combined, I think, all Washington, D.C. combined. They, they have all their power, they have all their money, 
that she was faithful with what she was given. And we get to see a taste of that here in this life, but I can't imagine the reward that she is going to get in heaven. And it, and it pales into comparison to life I'm living, I guarantee that. And, and we don't have to be her, <laughs> but we be the best version of ourselves. We, we look at how we can serve until the very last day he takes our breath away. See, she lived, if you want to know, she died from COVID, but she never feared COVID. She didn't fear death. She knew death had no sting. So she didn't stop living the way she was living. She went out day and, day and night serving those in need and said, if I get COVID, I get COVID. <coughs> but she's rejoicing in heaven because she gave up. He is, she is no fool who gives up all right, what she cannot keep to inherit what she cannot lose. Let us be that type of person. Your challenge here is to spend this week making yourself a little list. You can actually make this four columns. Straw, sticks, bricks, and uh, you know, gold, precious metals. Right. Because those, those are the refining things, right? The gold, precious metals. Those are the most valuable things that you would hold on to. In your life, I want you to list out your commitments this week. I say Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday, because if I get you going on Tuesday, you're going to forget I ever existed. Right? So by Tuesday, you want to do this. You can do this in like three days or, or one day, but list out your commitments and then ask yourself, does this have eternal value? And if it doesn't, can I make it have eternal value? Can I, can I do something different that would allow this to make it have eternal value? Or, here we go, should I be doing? might need to cut out there with this. So that's my challenge to you. You can take it or leave it, okay? But, but that's what I'd like to be, that type of person that we one day hear when we set that home there. Well done, good and faithful servant. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity to come here and bring your word, Lord. I pray that each person here truly takes to heart and that they, they live a life that serve Christ, serve Jesus Christ. If anyone here is not serving Christ in the area and they know they need to let things go, this, the sticks and the straw, uh, may they lay it on the altar now and just give it to you now and, and start living more eternally focused. Um, whatever it is, if there's things that on that list of what keeps they need to, to implement, show them that, nudge them there, Lord. Thank you that you have lavishly given us every blessing you have just and given us eternal life through Christ. And let us live like that, sharing the gospel, being people of forgiveness. And this is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.